We gather on this Wednesday of Easter week. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace and mercy of God be with you. As we begin our prayer and worship, let us pause a moment to call to mind those areas of our life in need of God's mercy and forgiveness, and perhaps a reconciliation with others. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, grant that by celebrating these present festivals, we may come through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but I will give you, but what I do have, I will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who 
used to sit begging at the beautiful, at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Rejoice, O hearts, that seek the Lord. O hearts, that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts, that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts, that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts, that seek the Lord. Your descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord of our God, throughout the earth, his judgment prevail. Rejoice, O hearts, that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham, and by oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus drew nearer and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Jesus asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those of us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going further. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in and stayed with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Then they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with them who were saying, The Lord is truly risen. He has appeared to Simon. 
Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them by the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. This reading from the, from the Gospel of Luke is a, is a really special one and often used uh, on Easter Sunday evening uh, if there's a liturgy in a church on Easter Sunday evening. This is often the Gospel reading that's used. This story of the road to Emmaus. And there's some interesting things to take note of that may, they may pass us by without notice, but on further reflection, um, they're important things because we, Jesus is walking along with these two disciples and they don't recognize him. And so it's not like he's coming to them and, hey, I'm here, you know, making himself known right away, uh, which may have, um, may have thrown them into some disarray, but he's rather walking with them, listening to them discuss Uh, listening to their troubles, listening to their disappointment, um, sharing the scripture readings with them, uh, exploring all that the scriptures mean, and gradually bringing them to sight, bringing them to recognize him. Rather than immediately make himself known to them, um, he wants to journey with them. He wants to walk with them. And often, often we too expect and hope for uh, an immediate word from Jesus in our own lives. But so often Jesus is walking with us and gradually revealing what it is that he would like us to know. And especially to be mindful of his presence with us, especially in difficult times and questioning times in times of sorrow perhaps. The Lord walks with us and is gradually made known deeper and deeper to us. Let us gather our prayers. We pray for ourselves and for all of our brothers and sisters of the church that we may be mindful of the ways that the Lord walks with us at all times, gradually bringing us deeper and deeper into understanding of his presence. We pray. We pray for all those who feel that the Lord has abandoned them or that they feel that he is not with them, that they may have eyes and hearts to hear and see the Lord's presence, we pray. We pray for all those uh, people of the world who live in the midst of war and violence, for those who come to assist them, uh, risking often their own lives, we pray. We pause to bring to mind the other prayers we bring with us today. For these we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill and those who care for them, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For Stephen and for all we promise to hold in our prayers this day, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. A holy and gracious God, close to your people always, hear our prayers and address our needs. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our offering may be acceptable to God. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and heart and body through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, in paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, you are indeed holy. You are the source of all holiness. And we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Once again, he gave you thanks. In giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blasia. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Join in our voices, we pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look then not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another some sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, <clears throat> that the reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of God be upon you, the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go forth in the peace of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you. I think we have yet another birthday among us.